Hey guys, Derek Craig here with oilfoodbasics.com. In this video, I wanna kinda of spell out advice that I have for students, and this is pretty general, but at the same time, I'm targeting college students, but I'm also targeting students in the oil field. Um, so, it, But it's broad enough that it, you can apply it to other, other degrees, other majors, et cetera. But you know, my background as a petroleum engineering student, you know, that's kind of where I'm coming from. And this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while, but I was waiting until I graduated, right? So it, it was behind me so that now like my advice is complete or whatever. But uh, anyways, I've got roughly 20 snippets of advice for you guys and I'll try not to make it last too long because I definitely could. Um, but <laughs> this thing will be a short video by any means. But uh, as with anything, if you guys got questions or want advice on something else or want to see a video done on a particular topic, uh, maybe that you're struggling with in school or whatever be the case, drop me a line or, or you know in the comments below or whatever. And also, you know, if this is a career that you're trying to de decide if you want to go into, if you want to go into oil and gas, uh, specifically engineering or whatever, again, please reach out to me. Um, reach out to us at Oilful Basics. Uh, we'd be glad to help you out as we can. Anyway, so advice number one. And these are in no particular order. I'm just basically going as I wrote them down. So first off, I said, know what purpose the degree serves and know when to stop if necessary. So this is, maybe this is a rough one to start with, but you know, if you're going to go to college and you're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars probably on a degree, you need to make sure that it's something that you're passionate about um, and that you're truly interested in it. And if not, you know, maybe explore other options. Uh, maybe maybe try something that isn't college. I mean, there's so much in blue collar. If you still want to be in the oil field industry, there are plenty of blue collar even opportunities where you don't even need college. Uh, you can get paid just as well um, with a trade. Um, so there's lots of options. Know what purpose a degree is going to serve you. And you know, economics are a big part of our industry. So. Do a little bit of an economic analysis, at least in your head, guys, about what purpose it's going to serve you financially um, in your future, and also, you know, if you're going to enjoy it. So, that's that's advice number one. Oh, and I'll also I'll also add, there, there's no shame in, in stopping or switching majors or whatever. There's no shame in that, guys. This is you're setting up your future career, your future life. So, you know, put some thought into it. Number two, I said go to events, network. And it also pretty well goes in line with number three, uh, what I said, say yes to nearly every opportunity. So guys, networking is huge in our industry and who you know can not only be the difference of, of helping you get information when you might be in, in a hard patch, let's say you've got a job and you're trying to figure out something and you just don't know anything about this topic that you've been assigned. You've got resources that you go to, you've got people that you've met at, at different events and stuff in the industry. and you know, and like I said, go, you know, take advantage of every opportunity. You never know what, what that opportunity is going to have in store for you. And you never know how it's going to benefit you down the road and who you know. And guys, this can, this can also have, play a big part in getting you jobs. So I'm obviously, you know, you, so you want to you wanna have that. You want to go to networking events. Um, and, and don't turn down very many opportunities. If it's going to a conference, if it's doing a research paper, you know, or, or whatever, just don't turn stuff down, guys. There's always going to be an opportunity for you to learn. And, and one thing I'll say too, a lot of times it's super easy to get people to help college students. So it's going to be easier for you to do fill in the blank as a student than it will be later on in your career, most of the time. And also, while it's kind of on the theme of getting a job, right, using your network to get a job, also don't waste your time with online applications. Now, obviously, I guess maybe maybe do a few, um, but in, in my experience and, and most of the people that I've known who have started and, and sought after their job hunt online, whether it's an internship or full-time, whatever be the case, if they're using online applications and that's it, you're, you're not probably gonna make the cut. You are on with, probably th hundreds if not thousands of other people potentially depending on the job, depending on the market. And, and to, it's so much harder to stand out online um, and it's, it takes so much more time. If you're gonna do that, you know, oh, make sure your, your, your cover page and everything is specific to that. Well, that's gonna take a lot of time, right? So there are more effective ways I think to get jobs, work your network, get out cold call people. I don't know why people don't do this anymore. Cold call people, um, if you're looking for that job, cold call companies. So, you know, especially on the service side, you know, the service side, especially, you know, if, if, if it's booming, if, if industry is, is good right now, you know, especially on that service side, it's a good place to get your feet wet. And again, if you call one service company and, you know, ask if they have job openings or whatever, don't end there. 
ask if maybe they know of a company that does have an opening or a company that is a little understaffed or whatever. Just get a conversation going. You can do that on the phone. Email is also okay too if you have specific contacts. You can stalk people on LinkedIn, whatever it takes. Don't get stuck in that online application world, okay? Don't, you can do a few, whatever. If it works for you, I guess it has to work for somebody, right? But go beyond that. Don't count on that to be where your job's gonna come from. Use it as a resource, maybe do a few, but go beyond that. All right, the next one I have on my list, and I've already lost count because <laughs> I didn't number them, I just have them bullet pointed. But anyways, and one of the one of the key pieces of advice I think in all this list is going to be make this your passion. I mean, if it's not your passion, maybe it's not right for you. Maybe what you're doing isn't right for you. Or maybe you haven't found the cool part of it yet that will become your passion. You know, maybe maybe all you've seen is like let's say production, and, and you're going to really discover your passion when you get into drilling topics. So I mean, whatever be the case, just make sure that you make it your passion. And if it's your passion, it's going to be so much easier for you to get good grades. It's going to be so much easier for you to stay involved and go to you know events when they have speakers on campus or whatever be the case. It's going to be so much easier for you, and it's going to show to other people, right? It's going to open opportunities for you. So make it your passion. Make it your passion. If it's not your passion, and kind of following that same line, if it's your passion, you're going to be able to get involved. So that's my next. That's my next point is to get involved. That is, especially in my mind, I think to a lot of recruiters as well, that is way more valuable than a 4.0 student. So, you know, if you're, a, I, I was roughly a, between a 3.5 and a 4.0, I was in that range, right, as a student, but I was heavily involved. And so to me, a 4.0 wasn't important. I wasn't, I wasn't really shooting for a 4.0. Right? It just takes so much more effort to get to that, that line, right? I was more interested in being a, a good student and doing the, doing the best I could, right? But also being involved. Uh, that's going to take you way further. That's going to stand out to recruiters, you know, whether it's an internship or getting a job, whatever. It's going to stand out. So get involved and worry about that um, more than a 4.0. Don't let your grade slip, right? But a 4.0, yeah. But the people that can get a 4.0, good job though. If you can do a 4.0 and still stay involved, you, wow. <laughs> Hats off to you. Okay, and kind of, again, along this theme, right, because this is pretty important to me, uh, my next piece of advice I said was shadow and go on trips, explore, and, and don't be afraid of, of no. So, like I said, it, it, it kind of goes back to the networking thing, right? Use your network. So, you don't have to learn just in your classes. If you're struggling, let's say you're struggling to get an internship, and this was me freshman year, um, it was, it, that's when the, the market sung, right? Basically, when I came to school. So, it was hard to get a job, but what I did, I could job shadow. Um, and I went around at a couple different companies and shouted. First off, that made sure it's really what I wanted to do. Second off, it exposes me to a bunch of stuff, a bunch of different types of operations. You can shadow a bunch of different type of people. You can sh shadow just engineers like you'd be doing in the future. Or you can even shadow some other auxiliary staff members or whatever of, of local companies. But get out and shadow. That's going to teach you so much. Um, that's really going to benefit you in the future. And also, um, especially if you're an underclassman or kind of still fresh, you can easily, easily, easily use a job shadow as experience on your resume. Um, I did that for a year or two. And so my job shadows, you know, you make sure you learn very quality stuff and, and you can write that on your resume like it was a job in a sense. Like you, you went on that job shadow and you learned about X, Y, Z. And you know, if, it, if it's sold well and if you truly understand it, that, that's, almost as good an experience, right? You don't have the length of time that you would as having a summer job, but you have learned a lot. And you might learn stuff that you won't have learned in class, right? You might learn what uh, companies are actually doing. And, you know, it seems like curriculum kind of lags a little bit, a couple of years or a couple of decades, depending on it. Um, but you'll learn what people are actually doing in, in the real world today. And again, you know, if, re if you reach out to these companies, and don't be afraid of them saying no, whether you're looking for a job, whether you're looking for job shadowing, whatever. If they say no, just ask, you know, if they know of another company or something that would have a yes, you know, answer to whatever you asked. Um, or if they could point you in the right direction. Typically, people can at least point you in some direction. Okay, and my next one is don't be a know-it-all. Um, I said be humble and never stop learning. Don't imagine yourself to be above others. You'll get complacent and fall behind. You don't need to necessarily be number one, but rather unique in strong ways. So 
don't be that know-it-all. Um, like I said, be, you, be unique in your own way. Um, you could, again, soak in all this information you can, learn as much as you can, uh, but don't play that off as being a know-it-all. Whenever, and this, this, this pretty much comes up, let's say you're, you're going on you know, field trips and you, you know, it's, it's, another, it's another rig site, right? You go on rig, how many times do you get field trips to take you to a drilling rig? Well, again, kind of go back to that thing. Don't say no. That was my other piece of advice. I, I, there's students that, I mean, unless you have something coming up and it looks like a very you know, similar to what you've seen, uh, there's some cases where it'd be okay maybe, but you're always going to learn something new. Uh, but if you go on site and, and you approach it and you're just not paying attention or you're like, oh, the driller is going to say this, this, this. Yeah, those are the BOPs. This is what this RAM does. This is the work. There's always going to be something new. So whether someone starts explaining to you something that you've heard even a couple, a couple of times, typically don't stop them. You'll, they'll always say something that you didn't know. Um, so again, don't be a know-it-all. Don't, don't play it off like you know it all. You, if someone wants to explain something to you, let them explain it to you. There's always going to be something new. And again, don't be concerned with having to be number one, guys. You will stand out in being humble and knowledgeable and, and help others too. With, with what you do know, instead of playing off as a know-it-all, help others. And, and people will know that you know what you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't have to, to be a know-it-all personality-wise. And again, all this kind of runs together. My next piece of advice I have was seek out opportunities. Don't wait on them to find you. This is everything from, from jobs to learning, just to never stop learning. Like guys, don't wait on things to come to you. Um, don't wait on campus recruiting to happen or whatever. Don't, that's not end all be all, guys. You have to go out and, and work yourselves. Um, seek out your own opportunities. And, and that alone, will put you way ahead of others. So not that, not that you have to be not that mentality of being way ahead of each other, of others, but little things like that, that's what'll put you ahead of others. Another thing, and again, there's no particular order, so it's all over the place, but another thing I have wrote down is have a strong friend group. So that's gonna help you everything from studying and, and understanding the curriculum and oil field stuff wise and, and, and just college stuff, right? All the way to having a cool group of friends to do stuff on in the evenings and weekends, someone you can go to when you have an issue or just talk through things, I mean, literally anything. That's going to be key to having a really good college experience. Uh, so have that good, strong base of friends and help them out too, right? If, 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 you, if, you, if you end up with a job and you know, you ha you're, you're sitting good, but you happen to hear about other, you know, other openings maybe, Point your friends in that direction, right? See, always be willing to help your friends. All right, next one I have is be good at communicating, presenting, and writing. So these soft skills. Uh, these soft skills are hugely important. So I, I mentioned a 4.0 isn't that big of a deal. Um, this is a bigger deal than that 4.0. If, even if you're a 3.0 and you can present material really well and you can just conduct yourself really well and you, you're are good in speech and the way you talk to people um, and maintaining eye contact literally all these little things all of these soft skills that's what you're going to be using day to day it's not so much the equations that you use and that you learn in school and where your grades come from right it's these soft skills that's really going to, what's going to make a difference to your manager to your boss to your coworkers, your mentees literally everybody who comes in contact with you that's what they're going to see that and your and your knowledge base but soft skills are key so any opportunity you guys get to be part of a club or anything where you're presenting um, or a class where you're presenting even um, that's presentations are incredibly prevalent in our industry and a good presenter is a little bit more rare so if you could be one of those guys you're going to stand out okay Next one I wrote down was to always add to your own personal touch to projects or roles or whatever it is that you're involved with or doing. That's gonna, if you go beyond the status quo and, and just what your predecessor used, so if you end up like, an example I saw a lot, you know, if you end up being the president of some club, right? So like I said, get involved. Um, that was one of the other pieces of advice. Um, so if you end up as president or having some position in some of these clubs, that are very prevalent on college campuses, go beyond the status quo. You have to add your own personal touch 
don't just use the same spreadsheets or documents or patterns or role that previous that your predecessors had add your own personal touch uh, make your reign <laughs> make your presidency or whatever it is whatever role or project you have your own um, and that'll really help just well, it'll develop you and your abilities but also you know you're going to leave your mark and that's something that's nobody can take away from you and again so the next one i have wrote down i said be resourceful you don't need to be insanely smart rather insanely resourceful um so again everything from the shadowing um to looking up let's say you're you're trying to you're struggling with a topic right well let, let's say it's let's say it's plunger lift uh let's say it's plunger lift and you're struggling just to understand this and maybe everybody else just uses the book or whatever the professor said, just the notes, but a resourceful person is going to go beyond that. They're gonna watch YouTube videos, oil for basics videos, right? They're gonna they're gonna use the resources they can that they can find. They're gonna beyond, gonna go beyond what is expected of them. They're they're gonna maybe maybe some of the network that I talked about, maybe you've met somebody who sells plungers, guys. Those guys love to help students, okay? You can even bring them in as a speaker. Like, like they love to help students. And that's a, a pretty good summary of, of, <laughs> of networking and being a student. Like, people like to help students. So be resourceful. Work your network. Um, go beyond, you know, the class and what they're learning. Um, again, it's not so much that, you, that you're smart and that you comprehend at the first, first glimpse, right, or whatever. It's that you're resourceful. Um, I, I think that'll play out better in the, in the long run. I think you'll have, you'll be more marketable and just a, a better student and a eventual employee. Okay. One of my pet peeves, this is the next one. I'm surprised it was this far down the list. Stay productive, stay busy. Don't waste too much time as a student. There are plenty of students guys who, who go to class, uh, maybe skip half of them, right? For just whatever obscene reason. And then they come back, binge watch the office or whatever it is that's your jam. Um, just hang out with friends or go drinking, whatever be the case, they just blow time. Time is pre precious. Um, so anything that you can do to stay busy and stay productive, that's a, that alone is gonna make you stand out. Um, so just be conscious of your time, guys. You don't have to waste it. Um, and again, also in the same way, <laughs> with, with me, it seemed like I was spending more of my time on the, you know, the clubs I was president of or the student involvements or oil flood basics than I was actually studying. Um, so again, that just kind of, that's all just personal preference. Um, I, I stayed productive and I tried to differentiate myself that way rather than again, being that 4 student that I probably could have been if I pushed myself hard enough um, and neglected some of the other things. But again, it, it, just stay busy, stay productive um, and, and be unique. Okay, the next one I had, I said, just because you've been on a rig tour twice doesn't mean you shouldn't go a third time. I already kind of hit on that a little bit. Um, it's the same with anything else. Um, anything that you think you've seen or learned about, every time someone explains it to you, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be a different experience. Something is gonna be new to you. Uh, so don't be afraid to stop or to never stop learning, guys. Oh, and the next one, again, I can't believe this one was that far down. Take notes. Um, if you go out on site, um, and, okay, I. I I don't do this every time, right? But especially if you've got a good opportunity, we're gonna be out for a while and you're gonna learn a variety of topics. And at the end of the day, you just know you're gonna have a hard time recalling everything that was said. Take notes. Um, I took, mm, one second. Those are my favorite things to take notes with in the field. It's just a small memo pad. They come in like packs of three or whatever. Literally, it's just lined paper, right? And this fits in a lot of pockets. So whether you've got, if you've got FRs on and you've got a little pocket right here, it fits in there. And then a pin will fit right beside it. What I did, um, you take this and you fill it out just little just little, little tidbits, right? As you go through the tour or whatever, just little tidbits. Um, and then whenever you're done or at the end of the week or the day or whatever, you process this, you, you review it. Um, and what I did, I actually wrote it out into another document on the computer. Um, I put it into sentences. And then you're processing it a second time, and then you're creating a resource that you'll have for years to come. Um, so take notes on anything, whether it's out in the field, you know, use something like this, or if it's out, you know, or if, if it's a student, if it's someone coming to speak to you guys as students, use a, a portfolio. Um, you use something like that. I mean, you have business cards in it too, if they're offering jobs or whatever. But take notes, guys. You will always be able to reference those notes. Okay, last two. 
Second to last, I said learn how to use email and calendar well um, and, and read your emails, guys. So first, uh, we'll start there. So students, a lot of times, won't read emails. Um, you need to get in the habit of being able to deal with a bunch of emails. So just like in college, you get all this stuff from like student life or just activities going on or whatever that you could care less about, um, right? Or flu, <laughs> flu shots, whatever, like whatever, health center, whatever it is, I and mean, some of those might be important, but you just get a ton of email as students, okay? And you have to be able to filter through what your professor's saying, what their emails are saying, what you know some of those emails you couldn't really care less about you have to be able to filter through that guys you have to be able to to get that that's a skill that you'll need in the industry that won't go away if you think you won't have as many emails working in industry you're wrong and there'll probably be more so you have to be able to filter through those you have to be able to know which ones are important which ones you need to pay attention to and read and which ones you can discard and, and not care about you have to be able to be organized um, that's going to serve you really really well in in, in your in your career say missing an email from a professor is one thing missing an email from a boss or a contractor that could cost your company thousands or tens of thousands or whatever more of dollars is a bigger deal and if you do that enough it could get you fired so you need to be able to do that use the calendar app too so this is all kind of lumped into that same piece of advice um, outlook is used a lot in our industry most companies have that we all have our own company emails right being able to send meeting invitations and accept them and schedule stuff that is not going to go away so if you can learn to do that in school and use that for your groups that you're president of or that you're involved with get good at that and, and that'll serve you well in, in in your future all right and last piece of advice this is the last one i have wrote down sorry again i don't know how long this video ended up being but um last piece of advice i have to you guys is use oil field basics so i'm kind of biased um, but we do intend to do more videos in the future um, on just random, well, somewhat random topics, right? That of, of knowledge that like Sebastian and I have that we can share with you guys on kind of a basic level um, and from an engineering background all the way up through, you know, we've got courses on, like I mentioned plunger lift earlier, that wasn't by mistake or, or by chance. We have a course on plunger lift. Uh, we have a course on plunger lift in the way that it's set up or the way that it's run, um, the way that it's designed. And we also got one on optimization. Um, so we've got courses like this, um, and depending on if we partner with a company or whatever, those are free, actually. Those are free right now, at least speaking. Um, some of them are paid, but again, it's all the ones that are paid are very reasonable priced. Um, we come from students. I hated buying textbooks. I, you know, so I get you. I get you. But use Oil Food Basics as reference. We've also got a lot of like free YouTube videos like this, guys, that you can check out and use, and we want to do more of these. Um, and if you're looking for ways to get involved, as, as I mentioned uh previously right as a piece of advice if you're a college student you're looking at ways to get involved with stuff um, you're in an area where there's activity around you get in touch with us um, maybe we can get you some equipment and then you can go around and and film you know film in different companies film, do shop tour walkthroughs do product demonstrations whatever be the case whatever um, that's one way you guys can get involved um, but contact me <laughs> don't just don't just assume we're gonna send you a camera um, but you know, use oil for basics, um, and again, see if you can get involved with us. Uh, that's not going to hurt you any. That'll get you good exposure. Um, but any, anyway, so whether you are a student right now and you're trying to make the most out of your college career and to really stand out, um, or you're looking to go into this, to go into petroleum engineering, or go into something, um, go into college, um, whether you know whichever side of the coin you watch this video as, I hope it was beneficial to you guys. And if you have any questions or want anything spelled out more or whatever. Uh, drop a comment below and subscribe guys um, all that helps us so thanks and uh, we'll catch you in the next video guys take care